right, so you're currently interested in learning about how can I become a CRNA with a low GPA? You've probably seen multiple videos on this and it's true. It's definitely true. You can be a CRNA with a low GPA. So definitely continue to watch this video towards the end because I have bonus information to help you out. So my name is Christine and welcome to a new video. If this is your first time here and you want to become a CRNA or grow your CRNA career, definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. So if this video is content that you really appreciate and love, definitely hit the like button so I can do more videos like this. So when you think about becoming a CRNA, of course, a lot of people hear CRNAs is one of the most highest paid, you know, advanced practice nursing, nursing jobs. You know, it hurt is very competitive. You know, you're required to have at least a minimum of one year of ICU experience. You hear that is, it's so hard to get into school, you have to have a 4.0 GPA in order to be accepted. A lot of those things are true, except it's not all about the grades. Yes, grades are important, but grades are not everything. So you could have a 4.0 GPA and that's it. Do you have a, a, a good personality in a sense? Are you a hard worker? Will you sacrifice? You know, will you work hard? You know, those are some things to think about. Are you a go-getter? Will you not give up in stressful situations? You know, those are things to think about too. You know, how much years of experience do you have? Are you involved on your unit? Are you doing um, quality improvement measures alongside with your nurse manager? Are you involved in research or interested in doing research? You know, are you considering maybe doing some type of research on your ho in your hospital to improve things? Because those are some things you gotta think about too. You know, maybe you say to yourself, man, when I first, you know, you know, decided that I wanna be a registered nurse, you know, my first year I did terrible. Yes, that can happen. Sometimes you need those roadblocks and sometimes you need things that don't align with you to make you realize what you want. Sometimes when you're first thinking about going to school, you're not aware of your study habits, your study skills. You know, you don't know how to prepare yourself. You don't know how to organize. And as you get older, you kind of realize that. As you have more experience, you realize how to organize yourself. So I can give you personal example of a person who did not have a very good GPA their first year of college and then just worked hard and is currently an experienced CRNA. That is me. That is me. I'll give you an example of a CRNA who um, had a low GPA and got into CRNA school. With me, my first year of college, I was in biology, then I was in biochemistry, then I was chemistry. I really didn't know 100% you know, what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be in the medical field. Um, I was considering research or maybe being a doctor. I didn't know for sure what I wanted to do. Also my first year of college, I was involved in, I was in crew, I was in rowing team where I crew was you row in the water and um, it's, a, it's like a, a boat sport and um, I was very highly involved in it. And so my first year, I was not able to balance being a part of a sports team as well as my ac academics. It just did not fall into alignment with me. I remember waking up every single morning at 5 a.m. in the morning and running to the boathouse, which is probably two miles away getting on the water at sunrise, rowing for hours, getting exercise, and being part of my team. Then finishing, running back to school and going for my classes. <laughs> Everyone's different. Maybe you have a similar story, you know, and that's what happened with me. So my first year, especially my first semester, I did very poorly had very low grades. And I was just so upset at myself, you know? And I'm like, ah, what is wrong with me? You know, maybe I wasn't going to bed at an accurate time. Maybe my study techniques wasn't on point. Maybe I wasn't, you know, as 
focused and as serious as I thought I was. And that happened. I needed that experience to get me where I'm at today. I needed to fail, you know, lose in order to get me where I needed to be. We all go through it. You may not have gone through it yet, but let me tell you, one day in life, you will go through it and it will humble you. So then I, I did not do well. And I was so mad at myself. My father was upset at me. My mom was upset at me. Like, what's going on, Christine? You know, what, what happened? And yeah, I wasn't able to balance the work-life balance in a sense, or the school work, you know, academics, and also a sport. Wasn't able to, and also freshman year, is your first year of being independent. So a lot of times your first year, you may not be as successful as you want to be. There are rare occasions where some people are just unique and they are able to do it, but hey, I wasn't able to. So my first year I didn't do well, and I said to myself, I then I said, well, what you know, what do I want to do? You know, I wasn't also focused. I didn't know for sure what I wanted to do my first year. I was just told, you go to high school, you graduate, you go to college. So I never had a break. I went right to school. That was just basically the path that was basically told to me when I was a child. So I followed the path. I think probably I wasn't ready. Maybe I needed one year off, but maybe I needed that experience to get me where I'm at today. Because without that experience, I wouldn't be a CRNA. So I wouldn't have my family that I have today. So it had to happen. So after that, I realized that I wanted to do nursing. So I shouted a nurse, shouted a doctor, and just for me, I realized nursing was for me. It was just a fit. Um, so I realized I wanted to be a nurse. So I went ahead, transferred schools, that had a transfer school, did not get accepted into the nursing program. And I knew it was because of my grades. Didn't get accepted into a nursing program right away. And um, I said to myself, well, I'm still becoming a nurse. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna work very hard. I'm gonna do everything I can in my power to get it. I didn't get accepted into the program, but I, could get, I did get accepted into the school that had a nursing program. I said, okay, I'm gonna work hard. So I worked hard. I improved all of my grades. I retook classes. I improved my grades significantly. Like I was on a, I was on a roll. I made sure I was involved in the nursing. In the nursing um, office, they had a position. I think it's called like um, you could work part time and help out in the, on the, in in the nursing office and help out in the office and you get paid a little bit. Um, so I did that part time. And I got to know the office staff. I got to meet some of the professors. You know, I got to meet students as well. You know, I got to hear about the program. I got to hear about nursing. I got to hear experiences of, you know, current, you know, professors and their experience when they were clinically, you know, nurse, you know, nurses. And I just realized like, wow, this is great. I really got to hear it from a lot of different people as well as I got to shadow. And I realized that maybe even more hungry to become a nurse. So I improved all of my grades and I tried so hard and my GPA still wasn't the best because remember your first year, I did not do well. My second year, yes, I did great, but they always take the average of them both. So my GPA was still on the lower end, but they saw improvement. They saw how serious I was. They saw how much courage I had and that I really wanted this bad enough. So after a year, approximately about a year, I got accepted into the nursing program. It could have been because my grades improved significantly and I retook classes that I didn't do well, I did amazing in. And also I had that relationship with the nurses, the, the nursing professors, the office staff, so they kind of knew me, they, were, they knew my working dynamics, they also saw how hungry I was. That's important too, very important too. You wanna show that you're hungry and that you want it bad enough. Because yes, you can get accepted to a program, and not be serious and flunk out. Same thing with CRNA. You may think to yourself, oh, CRNA is low GPA, is that even possible? Yes, because you could have a 4.0 GPA, get accepted into a, a university and go through the program and flunk. So definitely think about that. So when you think about, for example, for me, I had to work really extra hard to 
you know, get my grades up and to become a CRNA. So when I graduated my nursing degree, I was so excited. You know, I worked in the ICU for about three to four years, and then I got accepted into the, um, as a CRNA, into a CRNA program. But that wasn't just it. It wasn't just my ICU experience standalone. Because I still had, like, you look at my GPA, right? GPA, they combine all of your classes. They don't, you know, it's, it's just it's a GPA, it's a standalone number. That's not who you are, okay? It's about progression, okay? It's all about progression. So maybe you didn't do well your first year, and then as you progress in life, you got better and better grades, okay? Think about this too. For me, for example, when I graduated, I was a nurse, I was excited, and I went ahead and um, went right ahead and went, to get my advanced practice degree as a nurse practitioner. I was going back to school. I, did ve I was very intentional. I did very well in my coursework. So I was very focused on okay, improving my grades, improving my grades, improving my grades. I've always been about that. So I, I did really well in my schoolwork. And then I wasn't even thinking about Sierra at that point. I was always thinking like, how can, how, how can Christine be better? And so I was always trying to be better. And so I did better in my academics. And then I was just, I just love research. So what I did was I was involved in research. I did quality quality improvement measures on my hospital. I was a part of the code team. I was different champions for different things on in the, in our unit. I was charged. Tried to do a lot of leadership opportunities. I was part of the code team and resuscitation committee as well. And also I did research alongside with dentistry um, doctors and nurses we did this whole program in regards to substance abuse research and i worked in the biopharmacology um, research and i worked with you know a head researcher with his um, employees and i worked you know i got involved in you know writing a research paper i got involved in making a poster presentation i got involved in actually doing the research the beer bones research and actually using all of the different pipettes centrifuge to get my result i'm looking at the data doing all different calculations such good experience and i did that so i was very excited about that so that was also a positive thing to help with my GPA. Now that also GPA, not just GPA, my resume. So when you think about your application, yes, they look at your GPA, but that's not the only thing they look at. They're looking at, okay, all right, this is your GPA. But what does that mean? They sit there and they look through all of your grades and they also look at what improvements you've made throughout your career in academ academia, okay? So your first year you didn't do so well, second year you did better, third year you started doing really good, and third, fourth year you did absolutely phenomenal, you know? And they're like, wow, she's involved in research, she's part of community, she does a lot of community work. Hmm, kind of like this person. Her GRE scores look great, um, you know? I think she's really, I think she's a good fit. She may not have the best GPA compared to other, pay, other students, but man, look at this progression. She's a hard worker. I think she's gonna be successful. That's what you want to be. That's what that's what you want in your life, you know. And so, also, I've also worked with. I've also met preceptive students who have had, you know, borderline to low GPAs, and they had similar similar experiences that I have, you know. And that's important. It's all about the hunger, you know, how hungry you are and how passionate you are. You know, because you don't want to spend all this time and money into going into a degree that you're not 100% on. You have to be 100% on. There's going to be a lot of schooling. Four years to become a bachelor's with parent nurse. A minimum of one to two years of being an ICU nurse. Then Now the programs are going to be three, and a, three to three and a half years because they're doctoral programs. So add that on. It's going to be a, a, a many years from scratch to become a CRNA. So if you do have a low GA, GPA and you're saying to yourself, I can't do this, I can't do this, yeah. Mm -mm. do not say that. Say yourself, have a plan. Get all of your 
your your um transcripts out. Lay it out on a lay it out on the floor. Circle and highlight all the classes that you didn't do well in. Make sure the classes that you have prerequisites that you didn't do so well in. Consider retaking those classes. You may not want to, but maybe consider retaking that that course to strengthen your GPA, but also to show that you you can do it. You you can um get good grades. Especially if it's like the bare bones prerequisites like, you know, biology, chemistry, pathophysiology, anatomy, physiology. Those are like bare bones that like you need to do well in those courses. Not saying have a 4.0 GPA, but improve those grades significantly, you know. Um, so do that, you know. Say to yourself, okay, I did that. Now I have, I have better grades. It may not be the best GPA, but I have better grades and I retake those classes. Christine, thrives here tonight. What can I do next? All right. I got, I got you. I got you. Think about, you know, you being involved. Are you involved in your unit? Are you doing quality improvement measures? Are you a part of research? Or try, I mean, you may not like research. I know it's not the most appetizing thing to do, but it will help you with your journey in the medical field. You know, we always look at research, you know, on how we practice medicine. You know, it helps us and research always does change. So you gotta keep in line with research. And when you do go to CRNA school, you're gonna have to do research. It's a requirement. So if you don't like research, you better start liking research now because you're gonna be doing it in school. So get involved, you know, try to do things to get involved. You know, also try to start thinking about your resume, not, not your resume, but also start thinking about like your letters of recommendation. So maybe you're just starting out now. Try to develop really good relationships on your floor, really good relationship with doctors, you know, really good relationship with your staff. So down the line, you will have options in order to get someone to do a letter of recommendation for you for school. And also, I feel it's so important you have to shadow a CRNA. I know nowadays it's kind of rough right now with what's going on in our society, you know, but as soon as things start opening up, even if it's not even opening up, just put your hand, put your foot in the door and just ask. You always can ask and you, it may not happen. So, and definitely get your years of experience, you know, as an ICU nurse. It doesn't matter, community hospital, trauma hospital, you know, teaching hospital. It's all about, it's all about your ICU experience and how that ICU experience is for you. Same way saying you're not fortunate to have to be at a big institution and you're at a small community hospital. Well, whenever they have the sickest patients, you say, hey, I volunteer. Can I have the sickest patient that come in in the ICU? I would love to take care of those patients. So now you're putting yourself to have more exposure. It may not be all the time, but you're putting yourself to be more exposure to have sicker patients, to give you that experience. Get your certification in critical care. That's a must have. Schools, a lot of schools may not require it, but honestly, you need it. You need it. You need it. Um, you really do need it. So I hope this was able to inspire you and to know that, yes, you can have a low GPA and be accepted into a CRNA program. It's not about your GPA 100%. It's about everything else that goes into the picture and also progression. So if you like this video, definitely hit the thumb sign and definitely subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. I have more content coming out. I'm super passionate, super excited to be here for you guys. You know, and um, I want to help you through your journey. So definitely write some comments. I'm here for you. So if you want to learn more about CRNAs, how to grow your CRNA, definitely get one of these videos over here. And I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.